Welcome back. It's almost time to say goodbye, but not yet. We are thrilled to have with us Marketing Officer Ndeshimana Ngimwenya and Rosa Shikoa, the Corporate Relations Director of Kofindi Consultancy and Temperature Lounge. As many of you know, the Temperature Restaurant and Lounge is gearing up for its annual event, the Temperature Community Charity Day, which will take place on Saturday, the 25th of May at the Comastal Stadium. This event is dedicated to giving back to the Comastal community by supporting Supporting local schools, pensioners and orphanages and promises a day of fun filled activities for families. Rusa and uh, Dehimana are here to share more about this incredible initiative and what we can expect. Ladies, good evening and welcome to the Daily Roundup. Good, good evening, evening, how are you? I'm good, thank you so much for being here. Thank, thank you for having us. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with you, Deshi. Tell us a bit more about this uh, Community Charity Day and of course what inspired the hosting of this event. Okay, um, the temperature restaurant and lounge is situated in Komasdal. We opened in November in 2022 and it's one of those where if, although it's been a very successful cup last year we have noticed that the problems that are in our community as well. Mm -hmm. So we thought um, this let's put something together where we can also give back to our community. These are the people who support our business. These are our employees. Mm -hmm. These are our suppliers. Um, and so that is the core of it. We have wonderful founders of the business who very much believe in philanthropy mm -hmm. and they believe in giving back. So we thought that what is better than giving back to other schools in our surrounding areas, the orphanages, the homeless, um, even the venue that we are choosing, there are some homeless people who are staying there. So we just want to have um, a day to really appreciate and also just foster a, a, a kind of environment of giving back. Yeah. Uh, we feel like um, as much as people always know lounges and nightclubs as more for entertainment right. and good food, we should also see what it brings back into community. So we, important. Yes, yeah. uh, most of our employees are from Komazal. Over 30% mm -hmm. of the 100 that we have are based in that community. Mm -hmm. So we want to be able to know that um, we are giving back and they are noticing that we are definitely not just here to have a good time. Yeah. We are also here to make sure that everybody prospers. That's awesome. Thank you. Rosa, such an incredible um, event, you know, that has such an, a significant impact on, on the local community, as Deshi just explained. Can you elaborate to us on the specifics concerning um, the donations that will be made to schools, um, pensioners and orphanages? Okay, um, uh, as she mentioned, uh, that we believe mostly in plowing back to the community that surrounds us. That is why we then pledged an amount of 500,000 to make sure that we are giving back to 10 because at first before the press conference and all of that we're only identifying seven schools mm -hmm. and then we felt the need to say no let's branch out from Comestal there are other schools or other pensioners that are in other settlements that are also affected by what is happening currently mm -hmm. um, so we are going to be giving away cleaning supplies to 10 of uh, 10 local schools of which five are in Comestal uh, two are those for the visual and hearing impaired schools. Uh, one of them that we identified today was Pioneer's Boys. Pri uh, high, I think it's a combination mm -hmm. of, and then uh, in Katatura, we then chose the Havana Primary School as well as Marti Tisari. Um, and then we also identified local churches uh, in Greenwell. I think it's the Lutheran Church because they raise about uh, 120 kids and they they just there, right? So we then opted for that as well. And a few shelters that we identified yesterday, as well as two orphanages. As for the um, pensioners, we then identified about 40 that would receive uh, electricity vouchers. Um, to just get them through this winter, as well as uh, the, of, uh, the, what, the homeless people that are stationed in the Comestal Stadium itself. Mm -hmm. Ever since COVID, they have been there. All they have is tents, really. So we felt the need to then look at winter supplies. There are little ones that um, some are in school, some are not. So we're also looking at working with social workers with the line ministry to make sure that then we would um, also include a mental health project. At first, we really just had a mind to say it's going to be an annual event once a year. But gearing up to the uh, closer to the days of the event, we then realized that it has to be an engaging 
an ongoing relationship that we build with those that we're helping out. Hence why we're also calling the public to please be part and parcel with this event with any of the contributions or pledges that they can do, be it facilities, be it clothes, uh, be it food supplies, not religious really monetary value. That's fantastic. Oh, this gives me such nice, warm and fuzzy feelings. I love events and initiatives like this. She mentioned, of course, the pensioners that will be receiving electricity vouchers. And I understand it's going to be done via a raffle system. Yes. Does she explain that to us? Um, so the whole ev the event is happening on Saturday. We actually didn't get to those logistics yet. And so for each pensioner who comes through, whether they're coming with their pension card or with their ID card, we will put your number automatically into the raffle. And then we are going to have a draw where if you are fortunate enough to have your number picked, you will receive a voucher to, val to the value of a thousand Namibian dollars. Fantastic. Yes. So that is, that is one of the few. For the schools that are coming, we are looking at uh, 10 schools now. Mm -hmm. So this is about 100 kids that will be there. We are giving them each 50 boxes of paper and we're giving them 5 litres of cleaning supplies, but 105 litres. Mm -hmm. So we want to at least assist in um, taking a, a bit of the financial burden of the school itself because paper is one of those things that are essential. Exams are coming up. You mm -hmm. need to be able to print out those papers. Cleaning supplies, hygiene is very important. Mm -hmm. So we thought, let us at least try and take one burden off of the school because we see what they're doing for yeah. our community. Yeah. Our, our kids in, 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 the, our, in our areas are amazing. They know not to come to temperature because they're underage. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is just some, a form of way to say um, we see what they're doing and would really like to be able to just make their job a bit easier. Yeah. Because um, as much as we all think education is free, unfortunately, the necessities that make a school mm. run, those things are not for free. Yeah. 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 So this is why we are looking at really the essential needs. Um, and even with regards to our donors that are coming in, we are asking for them to come in with pads. We are, come, we are asking for condoms. We are asking for blankets. Mm. We, we really feel with, like Rosa mentioned, with winter coming, blankets will be essential for mm. a lot of the mm. people who mm. are, do not have housing. Um, so let us who are privileged um, see what little we can do to make somebody else at least a little bit more comfortable. Yeah. yeah. Rosa, you mentioned that you had identified uh, two orphanages to be on the receiving end of these uh, you know, donations. Talk to us about how you um, foresee this assistance in um, improving the lives of the children in these orphanages. Okay. Um, at, uh, visiting the orphanages, uh, we then only had an idea to say is the cleaning detergents, is the uh, is the food, the appliances, but sitting with the kids and the caretakers in those places, we then identified that these people really do need professional help in terms of they feel neglected in society. It's not every child that grows up in an orphanage that have hope. So we want to be the pillar of strength for them. That is why we then um, are pleading with uh, the nation at large because we do know it's a constraint on the government like yesterday um, the Ministry of Health took us on a tour to just show us different shelters that in Ventuk and we were really surprised so these orphanages can be a stepping stone for us as a, an establishment to assist them however we would it is a larger community out there and they really do need assistance and that is why local businesses even if you are uh, an SME or so and you're starting something within that community rather than just employing the people also look at what is happening around that surrounding and coming back to your question um with the orphanages uh there's not much we can do as individuals especially now that they are they are already used to doing things a certain way right. so it's very difficult for us to also dictate on what they should do we would just want to have especially the orphanages carried up until our next financial year to say we will then be supporting these orphanages mm -hmm. as we go and then on uh, on the saturday is when they will receive the lump sum of donations but we also believe that the other homeless shelters are not very controlled mm -hmm. so that is why we can't give everything at once though on that day that is why we are going to make it like a recreational um, family community day in order for them to just feel in, involved and engaged in everything. Those are also some of the volunteers that will be part of the event because to keep the whole um, stigma to say no you don't have shelter you look this type of way. So we want it really involved for everybody to be part, of, part and parcel of the event. 
Fantastic. Well, ladies, unfortunately, we're out of time. But Deshi, of course, everything you guys have said just reiterates the fact that it takes a village. It does. Yes. So just your last words in terms of how the community can get involved to contribute to making this charity day a success. All right. Um, I can just, for now, the event is happening on the 25th of May. It will be at Kamazdal Stadium starting at 9 in the morning. The whole family is welcome. There's no entrance fee or food is we will serve you food, we will serve drinks, we will make sure that there are enough activities to give you entertained, but we definitely need still pledges. We, would, we are still looking for people who can come on board and assist with hampers. We have a few volunteers have already reached out, so the more hands the better, just to make sure everybody feels secure. So if anybody is interested in either assisting, whether in monetary, whether with your, your manpower, right. whether with music, please give us a contact. Uh, my number is 081. Double seven double one five eight two. Alternatively, you can reach Rosa on zero eight one two six three nine eight double one. Ladies, thank you so much for your time. Thank, thank you for you so being much. here and all the best with thank the event. You so thank, you so thank you so much. <laughs> on that lovely note, we wrap up today's.